Hello friends, you are on the DevVibe channel, and welcome to the free Flutter course. Today we will talk about a very important topic, functions in Dart. Let me tell you right away that this topic might seem complicated at first, but with a bit of practice, you'll understand everything. So, what is a function? A function is a block of code that performs a specific action and can be called at any time. Using functions helps to make our code more structured and reusable. Let's look at the syntax of a function in Dart. A function consists of a type, a name, parameters, and the body of the function. Let's start with the type. The type of a function is what the function will return after execution. This can be absolutely any type, including those we covered in the lesson on variables, such as int, string, double, bool, and so on. If the function does not return anything, it should be defined with the type void. Next is the name. The name can be almost anything, except for some restrictions, such as names that start with a number and so on. Immediately after the name come the parameters in parentheses. If our function does not take parameters, we do not write anything inside the parentheses. If we notice, the main function in which we write is also a function. This is the function with which our application starts. Let's write our first simple function. We will write it outside of main, as functions are usually not written inside other functions. The type of our function will be void since it will not return anything. Let's name it say hello, as it will print a message to the console. We could name it anything, but it's better to name functions in a way that reflects their action. It will not take parameters, so we leave the parentheses empty. Then, inside the curly braces, we write the body of the function, which will be a print statement with our message. Let's call it. Functions are called by their name, followed by parentheses with parameters if they exist. Run the program and see the result. As we see, the message hello world was printed to the console which means our function works. By the way, print itself is also a function, but one that takes a parameter. Therefore, when we call it, we pass a string inside the parentheses. Now, let's look at a function that returns, for example, an integer. In this case, we start writing it with the word int, as int is the type for integers. Next, the name. I suggest naming it get number. It will not take parameters, so we leave the parentheses empty. In the body of the function, we simply return the number 100. We return values from functions using the return keyword. This keyword stops the function's execution and returns a value. We can use this keyword in void functions as well, but then it simply stops the function's execution. Calling our function, we get the value 100, but we should save it somewhere or use it somehow. Let's try using this function to save the value in a variable. Create an int variable, and as its value, call our function. Now, print it to the console and run the program to see the result. As we see, the value from our function was printed to the console. We can also call this function directly in the print statement instead of using a variable, and here's how it looks. Run the program, and we will see the same result. Now, let's look at an example of a function that takes parameters. Let's write a function that will return the sum of two numbers. The type of this function will be int. The name will be calculate sum. This time, there will be parameters, and there will be two. Parameters look like variables and have a type. Our function assumes that two integer numbers will be passed as parameters. Let's define them as int number one and int number two. We list the parameters separated by commas. Now, inside the function body, we can refer to these parameters. We don't yet know what values they will have. The only thing we know is that they are integers. Now, let's write the function to return the sum. For this, we use the return keyword and the addition operator. Here's how it looks. Now, let's call our function. Passing the values in the parentheses, 
also separated by commas. Running the program, we will see that it works. This happens because the values we pass when calling the function replace the parameters in the function body. Let's dive a bit deeper into parameters. Parameters can be positional or named. We just looked at positional parameters. This means they will be substituted based on the order in which we pass them. This means in this case the number 10 will be substituted for number 1, and the number 15 will be substituted for number 2. We will cover named parameters in future lessons, as it might be too confusing now. I suggest you complete a small task. Write a function that takes an integer and a string and prints this string exactly the number of times specified by the integer. Pause the video and try to solve this task. Solution. To solve this task, we need to use loops. Create a function with the type void since it will not return anything, but only print values to the screen. As parameters, we will take a string and an int value. The parameter of type string will be called text, and the parameter of type int will be called count. Inside the function body, create a for loop. Inside this loop, initialize a variable i and set its value to zero. In the condition, write that i should be less than our parameter count. And don't forget about the increment. Inside the loop body, print our parameter of type string. Let's call our function, pass any values, and run the program. As you can see, our function works perfectly. Today, we have learned the basics of working with functions, but not everything about them. We will continue learning and discussing the rest in future lessons, so don't worry. Thank you for watching.